Hi, it's Brittany from The Imperial, and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to make the Sarah bag from More We Know. It's so cute. It's so fun. I did get a chance to test this pattern several months ago now. Uh, so this is the second one I've made. This pattern is included in the So Whatever project box. Um, and that is a collaboration between More Me Know, So Many Creations, and Sonar. So this is one of the three patterns you get. Um, the boxes are limited. There aren't a ton left. So if you would like to get one, get it now before it sells out. Otherwise, this pattern will be available at a later date to be determined. Okay, let's get into what I used. This Hexmas Cat's vinyl is from my shop the imperium it ran in my winter holiday round uh i will have retail and then as always if there's a print i've run before and you really want it email me we'll get you hooked up um this is the starlight gold i think it is called it's from more me know the vinyl um all of my hardware and zipper pulls including this cute little key cat are from more me know uh, this webbing is from Georgia Girl Stitches, and then if you can see the really fun variegated strip, variegated string I've got, it is the candy cane sewing string from Wizardry. Okay, so this is fun. It's pieced together. You have these cute little handles. We've got a recessed zipper, and Donut is peeking to say hi. Um, the artwork is from Hex Reject too, so... No, I love hex rejects. And then you have a zipper overlay with a pocket in there. And on the very front of the bag, there is a divided dual pocket. It's not a hard sew. It's pretty, pretty easy. It is fun. You could leave the recessed zipper off if you wanted. You could just pop a magnet in there, call it a day. You don't even have to add the connectors for the crossbody if you don't want to. Um, in the box, she also um, goes over turning it into like a backpack, um, like a modified convertible backpack tote bag. Um, and there's a fun flap. Uh, and I know that when the pattern actually releases, there'll be like a full backpack version. So when that comes out, I'll do that. But anyways, I have a cutting video for this if you'd like to watch it before you sew. I hope you enjoy and let's get sewing. Before we get started sewing, I want to go over all the pieces real quick. I have three zippers cut. Um, two are 16 inches and one is 11. My zipper tape is a little funky, but it's fine. All right. Um, it has been like two weeks since I cut this. <laughs> so we have... I'm doing a, a webbing crossbody strap. In the pattern, you do a two-toned um, strap. You can follow the instructions for that. Um, I think I have like two-toned strap inside of my Denver backpack tutorial if you really wanted to go look, but you're just gonna fold into the center on each piece, tape it together, and sew it. But with my crossbody strap, I have two one and a half inch clips, a one and a half inch slider, and then we have our recessed zipper pieces. There's four of them. So I did two exterior vinyl and two lining, and then one of those 16 inch zippers goes with that, along with a zipper pull and a zipper end. I need to grab my zipper pull apparently. I did not grab it. Um, and then we have, let's see here. These are my handles. So I've got two of those. This is the top of my lining. I have my connectors. So I have four um, strap connectors and four one inch rectangle rings. And then my side connectors for the crossbody strap, I had cut those more narrow because I'm using two three-fourth inch D-rings. 
like using those for connectors. And then we have, did I mark these? I did. Okay. So I have my two top pieces and I even put a front and a back because that's how I want to do them. I've got my two centers and then I have my two bottom pieces and those have the little um, corners cut out. I also have one of my nameplate logos. I have um, zipper tabs. I have my base and then I have my lining. <laughs> so sorry. So I have my front pocket lining. I think I cut something wrong on that and I didn't change it. It's fine. And then I have my zipper pocket overlay. I have the lining pieces for that pocket. I must have cut my bottom wrong. <laughs> This is wrong. I'll have to fix it. But we have a bottom and then we have our two main lining pieces. Okay. It was three zipper tabs, which I thought was right. And then second guess myself. Okay, I fixed my base. I grabbed my other zipper pull. I now have the main components of my exterior. So we're going to work on prepping the back panel first. So we just need the three pieces for the back. So let me see here. These are the, not the same. Okay. Your middle panel, the one for the back is taller because this one has the zipper in it. Um, and then I don't think for me, we'll go with this for the back. And then I had marked this. So this one is the back. Oh, I'm also using my, um... I'm using the candy cane sewing string from Wizardry. I'm really excited. It's gonna be cute. Okay, this is my top. So we need to piece the middle and the bottom together. So we're going to, if you have a directional print, make sure you're going like this. I probably should look and see what the seam allowance is. Oh, it tells us. Cool. All right, so I'm going to clip this together. I do enjoy that you don't need interfacing in this pattern, depending on your materials. Like if you're using uh, vinyl and cork, you won't need any. If you're using woven, you do need to interface that or you're going to have a very saggy bag. And unless that's what you're going for, then power to you. All right, so we're going to sew this together. And I forgot to mention, but you really do want to have two bobbins because there's a lot of top stitching in this. Um, and you, you do need the two. Yeah. So after you stitch these together, you're going to open them up and top stitch both sides. So I like to just go to the back and give this a press back here. If you like using seam rollers, absolutely go for that. But you just want to make sure that that is open like that so that when you top stitch each side, you're catching the seam allowance. Okay. So this is just a top stitch and I like to put my hand like in the back to help smooth it as I go. And I have the skinny foot on and okay, I messed up that stitch a little bit. I was too far off, but this is the back of my bag. Don't tell anyone. But I really just want to keep the center of my foot up against that edge. And then when I get to the end, instead of um, 
cutting my thread and everything, I'm just going to pivot. I want to make sure that this is smooth on the back still. You can kind of feel it as you go. You might need to adjust a little bit. So that piece is done. We're going to repeat the same to the top. And again, if you've got a directional print, you're going to lay it and flip it down. And I'm just going to clip. So top stitch. So you can see why you need those two bobbins. Oh, I just remembered I have like Christmas tags from Heartwood and Hyde. I mean, I use it on this one. We'll see. I think I have one that says like naughty nice I tried and I've used it with this print before for a little gift bag. Okay, so again, I'm just adjusting as I go. Variegated thread is so much fun on this. I love it. Okay, so there is the back pieced together. And now we're going to do the front. So, we need our front zipper lining pieces and the three pieces for the front. Okay. So, we're going to start with the bottom. So, this is my top. This is my bottom. And again, fold that down. Clip and sew. top stitching this also. I think if you have a thicker glitter vinyl, it's easier if you start with that side. At least it seemed like it on the second one for the back.
lots of top stitching. Okay, so now that we have those two together, we need to work on our zipper. So we're gonna take one of the zipper, oh, sorry. We're gonna take all three of the zipper tabs and we're gonna make a line in the middle. Yeah. Three, yeah, okay. Okay, on one, we're going to fold both sides in like this, and then we're going to set these to the side for a moment. So I'm going to take some tape. Okay, apparently some of my tape is missing right now. No, yes, that's fine. Okay, I'm going to take a little piece of tape, and I'm going to put it in the center. And that's going to help this fold in right like that. So you're making a zipper tab and then we're going to find the center of our zipper tape. Okay, this is too long. Okay. Much better. Okay, so I'm going to find the center of my zipper tape, and then I'm just going to mark that, and this is getting covered, so it's fine. And then we're going to take another little piece of tape to hold this. So this is the back. I'm just going to pop this here, and then this is going to get lined up centered on that zipper tape and what we're going to do is we're going to stitch around here I like starting at the top or the bottom because that's going to get into the seam and uh, it won't show I'm actually going to try something real quick so my friend Shannon and not a threads co is a master of like bulk reduction and I feel like this is something she would do. It's not perfect, but I'm going to see if I can get rid of a tiny bit of bulk there. This vinyl is a little bit thick, so. Okay. Let's stitch around. And this is a top stitch. So keep that in mind. And we don't put our zippers on yet because this keeps the zipper tape together nicely and it's going to look better in the end so you don't end up with a bubble or anything. that's how that looks now we can go ahead and put those zippers on so you want the zipper to zip into that center on both sides um, you don't really have an option now because it has to go that way unless you put your zippers backwards but we can go ahead and slide that on So there is our zipper. All right. Now we have to put the tabs on. So these two, we are going. 
Okay. These ones we just fold one end in. So I really need to grab my other tape, but it's fine. <laughs> so we're going to put the tape at one side of the line. And we're going to fold in one side. Okay, so these are the side zipper tabs. And we're going to lay them right side up on the top of both edges with the raw edges together. Okay, so because this goes the entire length, we're lining it up, sewing it on, and then we can trim this off the back. So I'm just going to clip this on. And then I'm top stitching it on. So those are on. Now I need to trim the zipper here. So like this right here. We're going to trim that off. Okay. And there is our zipper completed. We're going to lay this face down onto this piece. I'm going to line this up and if if it's off a little bit you just need to adjust. I think mine might be uh, no, pretty close. What we could do is we can mark the center and go from there. I think that would be a good idea. And then anything that hangs over is completely fine because it's just going to get trimmed off. Okay. So right sides together, centering the zipper. And then I'm going to clip that on. You could use tape if you'd like. Yeah, see that hangs over a little bit. It's fine. So this zipper does call for a 3 8 inch seam allowance. I do struggle with that. So I'll show you what I've been doing and it's been working pretty well for me not perfect but I'll take it so I'm going to sew this on at a fourth of an inch and then I'm gonna flip it over and resew it Actually, what I'm gonna do okay so she has you stitch it on okay I'm gonna stitch it at one fourth and then I'll put the lining piece on before I switch to three eighths or as close as I can get if you don't tape it you just want to make sure that you're really being careful and keeping your zipper lined up to the edge So this is now basted on at a fourth of an inch. We're going to take 
one of, oh, they're different sizes. Okay, hang on. Oh, they're supposed to be the same. I'm going to take my shorter one. That's, that was another thing that I definitely messed up. Was it supposed to go all the way to the edge? It was, wasn't it? Hmm. I don't know what I did. It's fine. It is fine. Okay. So this one, I'm centering. And then I'm going to go in now at three eighths. And I have found with my zipper tape facing up, I'm able to get closer. So I don't have a zipper foot, but I have a like skinny foot or like a narrow workspace foot. And I kind of have to keep it pulled to the edge as much as I can. And it's, it's not perfect still. So I'm inside that line, like I said, it's, it's not perfect, but that's the best I've been able to do with this. Okay, so now we have this. We're going to press it open like this and we're gonna top stitch through those layers. kind of pressing it down as I go. This vinyl um, is a little bit thick. We've got that top stitched. And that's what that looks like on the back. Okay, we're gonna take the remaining exterior, fold that down, and I'm lining it up with um, the sides of the vinyl first and then centering it because that one zipper tab is a little bit longer. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to stitch it a fourth of an inch add my lining piece and do three eighths.
know what I did with her at the end. <laughs> it's fine. All right. So this one is going to go here. I'm going to flip that. There's a little cut. All right. And I'm going to clip this on. And I'm going to do the same thing I had done. I'm going to flip that. And sew it at 3 eighths. Or as close as I can get. Okay, um, I always say it in my videos, but make sure your needle is down when you lift the foot or everything's going to shift. So I just made sure I went back into the same hole I was in on the previous stitch. That's a decent try at three eighths, I would say. Okay, on this one, we are just folding the top up. You're not going to fold that lining piece up because you need it to stay down for the zipper. And then we're going to top stitch. So you're stitching through the top exterior piece and the seam allowance, but nothing else. have a nameplate now would be the time to put that on or you can wait until um the handle connectors are on if you want to to see how that centers i think i might actually do that okay so we need to secure and section our zipper pocket so because mine is not going into my side um, seam allowance, I'm going to need to close that, which is fine. But you fold this up, like you want it to sit flat, but where that center is, you're going to want to divide that to make two pockets. Okay. So I need to sew down over and then I can go up and come back down. But it's also easier to sew into that seam if you start from the bottom. So I think I know what I'll do. So I'm just making sure that the sides are flat. Okay, I'm just going to start like here and then I'll go back to that later. And again, this is because mine doesn't go into the seam. I'm not sure why I cut it like that, but it is what it is. So you can close these pockets. You're not going to be birthing the bag through it. Okay, so I'm gonna come up here. I'm gonna move my zipper pulls so they're not right in the middle. Okay, I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna get as close as I can without going into the seam or the zipper. Go over a couple stitches and then come down. Go back over. So you'd be done right now if yours went to the edge if you didn't want to baste it. And then same thing here. I'm going to get as close as I can 
And now I just need to do that over here so that I don't have a hole in my pocket. Okay, easy to easy. I feel like when I was done cutting, I was like, oh, I cut this wrong, and then I didn't fix it. So, I don't know. Okay, so she has you go up an inch from the bottom, so just be mindful of what she tells you in there. I, I know I cut something wrong, so it's okay. Okay, she has you baste the sides now, but mine would not catch if I did that. All right, we're ready to make our strap connectors. So we have the front and the back exteriors, and also they should match up. Ooh, almost perfect. Pretty good. If your seam allowance was off for the zipper, it's going to change that. It looks really good. Okay, I'm, I'm excited. Okay, and there's my back. Okay. How many times can I say okay? Sorry. We have our four rectangle strap connectors, our two D-ring connectors, um, and then we're going to make these like most connectors. We're going to draw lines down the center, tape them, and fold them in. I just need to grab the right. Okay, so we just need to mark, tape, and fold these to start. Uh, again, I cut my um, D-ring crossbody connector anchors more narrow, so they're only an inch and a half instead of two inches because the hardware I'm using for those is three fourth inch instead of one inch. But the rest of these are gonna be two inches. So we'll make a mark one inch in the center. You don't even really have to mark them. If you don't want to, uh, you could just put the tape down the center and fold. But if you're not confident that you're gonna make it look as good, definitely go ahead and make those marks. Um, I had grabbed, I got up to grab my uh, quarter inch tape, not even thinking I would usually use half inch here, so that's fine. I had a little lunch break, remember to stop and take a break. <laughs> So I just usually go through like this, tape them all at once. I think I need to get like a, pe a, a piece, a pair of scissors that I just use on tape. Like my snips have been all right, but I don't know, it's probably not great that I keep cutting tape with them. Okay, anyway. I'm going to go ahead and take the back off of these. And there's cat hair in my tape. There always is. Um, cat hair comes free with anything from my business. Okay, so you're just going to... Fold these in. Both sides to the center. And we're going to be stitching just like a top stitch down the edge of each. Alternatively, you could sew these at three eighths of an inch, or you could just not sew them. I, I like sewing them. 
Especially with this thread, I want it to show. So I just run them all through on one side first. Sorry. And when you're doing these, you want it to butt up against each other like sometimes when you're doing like a, a folded strap and you're doing like the double fold you don't want to go all the way into the center because you want the tiniest gap for um when you fold it the second time uh so that it can bend better but when you're doing this you want them to meet So I get to that end, just pull it around. I just want to trim those apart. And we're going to get the hardware set up onto these. So I'm going to using quite a few pieces of my half inch tape for this. So I'm just going to get them kind of started. Oh, and drop my tape so I can get my cat hair. <laughs> okay, I'm just making sure I have the back of each one of these, and I'm gonna put. Um, I'm gonna sort them so you can see like how cute that variegated thread is on there, and I'm gonna put a piece of tape up on each one right about here. I don't really measure it, uh, but the, it's it's about an inch and a half up. Okay, we need more tape. Uh, each one of these is going to have two pieces of tape. And we're putting the tape down here so that when we fold it, uh, the tape isn't touching our hardware. So you'll put a piece on and then you're going to fold the bottom up maybe like three-fourths of an inch, I'd say. And then you're going to fold the bottom or the top down so that they meet. And then I like to just get a piece of tape on there right away and throw a clip or two on there. So that's one. So again, folding up. They don't have to be completely even because you're not going to be able to tell. This is just the back. So make them meet, pop the tape on, and a clip. All right, so I need four more pieces of tape. And this tape helps hold it together before you sew, and also it's going to help hold it in place to be sewn on. So we're just going to do that to the rest of them, and the crossbody um, D-ring is going to be the same. It's just skinnier for me. Yours might be the same width, though.
if you wanted to do the the three fourth inch and you don't like how tall that is, you could make it a little bit shorter. But I like it helps you have more area to stitch it on then um, and more like for it to hold. How did I end up with an extra piece of tape? Oh, I forgot to put one on. I was like, what the? What in the world? Thought I counted, right? Okay. So, we're going to put the handle connectors on first. And we have a measurement for that. So, I've grabbed a ruler. I'm going to set the base to the side for one second. Okay. So the measurement we're using is going to be from the top corner of our connector. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. As long as you're consistent, truly, like, that matters a little bit more, too. Okay, so that's going to hold that together as best it can. Okay, and then... So you're going to measure from in from the corner and you're going to place it and if you want to make sure it's good you can line up the edge of your ruler and then this gets lined up. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch this on. And then I think I'll just time lapse doing all four because it, it's a little time consuming, but I'll show you the one and then we'll, we'll speed through the others. So when I stitch this on, I'm going to be going down, up, just inside the stitching and down. Now I could have sti top stitched these at three eighths and then when I go to the edge, I could go on the edge more, but... This is fine. Okay, I'm going to start right here. And I'm just going to use my stitch line as a guide to go right inside of it. And you want to get close to the top hardware, but um, you might not be able to get as close as you'd like. Um, just as close as possible. And I like to do a little top back stitch on those corners and then once you get here and you need to angle you want to take like a scrap of vinyl to put it over here it's going to protect your hardware and your vinyl from getting chewed up and then you might need to help push it a tiny bit because it's going to want to get caught up right there and then you want to make sure you adjust your needle at the bottom again just tiny back stitches you don't want to go through too many times because you could perforate your vinyl and then back stitch at the end and then I'll show you what that looks like You could also rivet right here if you wanted to, but this is what mine looks like. So like I said, I'm going to go ahead and we'll just zip through the other three real quick. And then we'll be back to uh, continue our exterior. Now that we've got our um, handle connectors on, we need the front and the back, the base, and our two crossbody connectors. I'm going to do this a touch different than the pattern. Um, I'm going to take 
Th this part's the same, but when we sew the sides together, I'll show you. Um, we're going to take the base and we're going to line it up at the bottom and it should fit pretty much perfectly here where those little cutouts are. And clip that together and then we will sew that. Now we're not going to top stitch both sides of this like we did the other panels, but we are going to take the seam allowance and keep it towards the base, fold that down, and top stitch all of that together. So you're top stitching the seam allowance to the base. And then we're going to take the back exterior piece and do the same thing. So we're going to line that up, clip and sew. And again, we want the seam allowance to go to the base. So you could sometimes I do this. I'll curl up um, whatever I need to get in here to the machine. So we want to make sure that the seam is going to the base. And just like when I was top stitching um, all of these individual pieces together, I will make sure with my hand on the top and the bottom that it is still going the right way because it can slip on you while you're sewing. <laughs> it's not fun realizing it later. So now in the pattern, uh, it has you sew both sides together at once. I'm going to do one side first because it's going to be easier to put my first um, crossbody connector on. Because you have to stitch it on the seam. Okay. So when you're lining these sides up, you want to make sure that you're lining all of these seams up. It's going to make the finished bag look so much better if you do that. So here where the zipper is, you're lining the top panel pieces up together. And if it doesn't completely fit, just adjust it a little bit and do your best. But lining up these seams truly, like, it looks so good when it's done. Okay, so your zipper, exterior zipper pocket lining pieces should go all the way, but again, mine didn't. Okay, so I'm going to sew this together. I'm 
almost catching that, but not really. Tiny bit. I think I looked at like 15 on the ruler instead of 16 or something silly. Who knows? Okay. So now that I got this side done, I'll show you what I mean by making it easier. So right now I have this to work with. I need to put a connector here. If this side was sewn already, I'd have to deal with both. Um, still going to have to deal with it on the other side. However, that's fine. So you want this seam to open up. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little snip there. I did not go all the way to that, but this is going to help this lay flatter so that when I'm stitching, I'm catching this open. It's going to help reinforce it too. Um, so I'm going to try to do this so that you can see as best as possible, but I know it's a little bit difficult because it's just all over the place. Okay, so we need to make a measurement to start this. So it is right here. I am going to line this up. You really want to get it centered. Okay. This is probably the hardest part of the bag. <laughs> Every time I do these connectors, I struggle. It's hard with like sewing it on the seam. And now I lost my measurement. Okay, let's try this again. Flatten it, measure it, and line it up. It's hard too because I'm trying to make sure I'm not completely blocking the view. Okay. There we go. Looks pretty centered. So this is difficult because you have to get this. The, the second one is going to be harder. <laughs> Center it as best you can. And we're stitching this on the same way we stitched the handle connector. And you do want to try to make sure that that seam is open because again, that is going to help stabilize this. I have also at times taken and put um, like a scrap of Decaville light behind a connector like this. Um, I have that scrap of vinyl to protect my hardware and my vinyl again. So I backstitched in a couple spaces just to help, but again, you don't want to backstitch too much because you'll perforate everything and it'll actually make it weaker. Okay, so there is one connector. Now we're going to stitch this side up. Again, lining up those seams. this side apparently oh there we go sometimes if you just like play with it a little bit it'll help too oh i 
I think it pulled right there instead, actually. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. We'll just adjust it. Okay. Right here has like the tiniest little, kind of like it's bubbling right now. But if I clip it a couple times, I should be able to flatten it as I go. And I won't have like a pleat or anything. Again, I'm gonna make just the tiniest notch there and that is just to help this fold freely you could also like tape these down if that helps you all right this one is gonna be a little bit harder to work with uh, so if I block the view I'm really sorry but I'm doing the same thing I just did but having to kind of contend with my materials a little bit more than I did last time. It's actually laying a little bit flatter. I don't know. Alright, so lining that up. I think I'm going to go ahead and get this in here this way. Again, I want to make sure that the back is sitting nicely. is almost done. Now we need to close the corners. Okay. Alright, so you're just going to squeeze this and it should lay flat. Kind of stretch it to make it fit. Um, you could mark the uh, center of the base if you wanted to, but it lines up so nicely. I really don't think you need to. So we're doing that on both sides. And I'm just gonna try to get that to lay right there. Again, yours will be stitched into your seam. Alright, and then we're just gonna sew that. And, um,. I won't be trimming down any seam allowance for this exterior. I don't want to mess up any of the stitches from everything being pieced together. exterior is complete. Yay, we can work on our lining. Oh, she has you do the handles next. We'll do the handles, I guess. And then the exterior <laughs> will truly be done. So these are faux rolled handles and we're going to mark down the center 
both. I lose my pen. No. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna make a mark down the center. And then we're going to put double-sided tape down the center. I'm just using quarter of an inch to keep it out of my um, stitches. Sometimes when I uh, have like glitter vinyl especially and tape on a handle I get like weird stitches so I just want to make sure okay we're gonna fold into the center do one first Okay, so I am into the center. We're gonna measure in from the ends. And then we're gonna fold the um, middle of the strap in together but we're not gonna focus on these ends so this pen just wipes right off i marked it on both sides all right so we're folding this in And sometimes I will clip past that line just to help it stay. And then we're going to stitch from mark to mark. And you want to make sure you back stitch at the start and stop. So my mark is right here. I have a clip before it. And it's basically like a top stitch on the like... Um, I guess you would say like the raw side, even though there's no raw material, but it's where the opening is. Okay, so this is what that looks like, and then this part will get folded up together to secure 
the handle to the connector like that. I'll go ahead and sew um, the other one on my own before we finish but that is how you do the handle. Right, we're gonna do the lining zipper pocket. So we need our shorter piece of zipper tape, one pull, our zipper pocket overlay, our two zipper pocket lining pieces, and a main lining piece. So almost got ahead of myself. <laughs> We're gonna take this overlay and tape. I like to tape near the center. Just like this. And then I'm gonna find my center. Measure down. And get that centered. And now I'm going to stitch all the way around the very exterior of this. If you don't want to backstitch, you can leave your tails long. Oh, make sure it is straight. It was a little crooked. I accidentally cut this waterproof canvas on the very edge, so the side is fraying. But I'll catch it in my seam allowance. It's fine. This, like right here, you could stitch um, a woven label and it's really cute. I'm gonna pull this thread to the back before I go any further. And then you just want to end in the same stitch hole that you started and pull that thread to the back as well and then you can knot these off From here, I just need to start a little hole, and then you're cutting the waterproof canvas, but not your zipper overlay. You're going to get as close as you can. So like my tape is in the center, so I am holding this away. I also have um, these ductile scissors. They're really nice. 
for things like that. For things like this. Basically, you're just trying to get this lining to not show. You just don't want to cut your overlay vinyl. Just the lining. So that's what that looks like. It's not pretty, but it doesn't matter because it will not show. So we've got this here. Now we need to work on the actual pocket pieces. You can leave your zipper pull off if you'd like for now. And the way we're going to do this is we are going to take a lining pocket piece right side up and lay our zipper tape right side up. Do I have this the right way? Are they squares? Well, they're supposed to be. Okay. I will use tape here. It does help. I don't usually use that. So I'm just putting tape on the very edge. And then again, our zipper tape is going right side up. And we're going to stitch that. Um, this is one fourth of an inch for the zipper. You stitch that and then you top stitch it. So you fold this like this and stitch. And then you take the other piece and you do the same. And so it does feel weird because you've got your zipper right side up in these. But when you think about it, you go in through the zipper, you want these to be like this. Okay. So again, I'm going to put my tape down. And when I'm doing this, I want to make sure I'm lining up the edges of my lining pieces. And then I'll just like slide this up and it's lined up. And then I just have to go from the center out. And it doesn't have to be completely perfect, but you want to make sure that those sides are lined up as best as possible. Mine's off the tiniest, but it's fine. What did I do? 
Oh, my thread is stuck. I don't even know how that happened. It's like very weirdly struck, stuck up on my thread stand. All right, fixed my thread. I went ahead and top stitched the other side down. And I also um, stitched that other handle, so it's good to go later. All right, so we're gonna put some tape down within these stitches. This is gonna help hold this in place. Not putting my zipper pull on yet because it's harder to line up with it on. But what we wanna do is center this zipper overlay both this way and this way on the zipper tape. And you can kind of eyeball it as in like the edges line up with the edges of the lining pieces. But you really just want to get that as straight as possible. And I want my zipper to close this way. So I'm not going to put it on at this very second. But I'm going to start like here and I'm going to stitch around and then I'll be able to put my zipper pull on and move it and then finish. So that works for me. If you have a different method that works for you, definitely go for that. I'm also pulling my thread to be green to start stitching on green feeling extra. Um, I could have pulled the threads to the back and tied them like I did the other stitch around here, but I'm just going to go ahead and back stitch. Now I'm going to get about halfway before I put my zipper pull on. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead right here. And it's a little bit tricky to put the zipper pull on with the zipper like this. Um... If you want to put your zipper pull on before you get to this point, absolutely, by all means, go ahead and do that. You kind of have to fiddle with it for a moment because you want it to line up still. Oh yeah, see, right. <laughs> you want to make sure that the zipper lines up how it was. Like you don't want one side in more than the other. Got it. All right, and then you're able to just push that in there. Make sure your needle's down. Move that zipper pull all the way to be out of your way. And then we're going to fold this down and stitch the zipper pocket closed. To close the pocket, we're going to fold this down right here. And we're going to clip the sides. We're going to leave this pocket open 
for turning the bag. But I do want to trim this to even it up first because I'm going to fold this like this. And I'll show you how I do that now. This fold is going to make it easier to close the bag when it's done. So zipper open, just going to sew up this side right over the zipper and you're able to fold that out of the way like that which is really convenient. Same thing over here. the bottom is folded and you can take this like this and just kind of fold like that all right, so now that that is together, we need to make our zipper panel. So I have all of these pieces, not these, all right. We have our zipper end, zipper pull, 16 inch zipper and our four zipper panel pieces. We need to take the zipper and I learned holding the zipper from Nicole at Sonar and I've been making a mark like five eighths of an inch and using that as a fold line, but if you just fold that down and let it pop over and then place a clip there, again folding down, letting it pop over, place a clip, and now that's going to hold it while you warm up these edges, you just kind of want to work it real quick. Careful you don't actually burn yourself, but you're melting these layers together. So you just want to do a little bit at a time. And it should hold, but I'll keep the clips on there just in case it doesn't. I'm going to put the pull and the um, zipper end to the side for one second. We are going to take on the wrong side of all of these pieces and we're going to mark in an inch. And you're doing it at both ends of each. You can mark all the way across, but just don't want to move my ruler. Could have done it the other way too. It's fine. And then you're going to take tape and you're going to put your tape just on the outside of that line towards the edge. do this on both sides and then we're gonna fold to that line all of these ends
couldn't decide where I wanted to start. <laughs> so you're just folding up to that line and it gives you a half inch fold. attention if you have like an orientation of these so technically I do and I like my zipper to close this way so when I'm looking at the front of the bag and I'm looking in I want my panels to be set up this way so that means if my zipper is in the middle I'm gonna flip this up this way and then I'm gonna put a clip right here just so I know that is that side. All right. I like to take and line my zipper up with where that seam is. I'm going to go ahead and clip. You could tape if you wanted to. And you can base this on if you'd like to, but I just always go ahead and make my zipper sandwich and so The uh, seam allowance for this zipper is your preference, so I'm going to be going with one fourth of an inch. I only do three eighths on a zipper when I have to. Stitching down the sides. Oh no. Oh, okay. It's still good. I'm going to move that out of my way. Right. And then this gets folded open and top stitched. I like to stitch all the way around. So I'll go ahead and line up this edge and start there. Um, it sounds like my bobbin is about to run out though. Yeah, pretty close. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch now before I end up in a tricky situation <laughs> on a top stitch. So I needed two bobbins and I didn't even do the crossbody stitch. So keep that in mind. Like I said, you're going to want two bobbins. Um, but I'll start here and I will just stitch this um, open end together. And then I'll use that being stitched together to help me pull and flatten my seam. Now if you are going to pull on the zipper you want to make sure you have even pressure the whole way or you could end up with a wavy zipper. There's one side. We're going to repeat that on the other. So again, I put a clip where my zipper side is. So that needs to be flipped. And I like 
to line up this end here and clip from there. It helps me get everything lined up better. And it's gonna help your zipper meet at the end in the right spot. All right, so we're gonna make that sandwich again. And stitch down the edge. That'll get opened up. And again, I'm going to stitch the open end closed first. I'm also going to put my zipper pull on because I think it's going to help me have the zipper together. I can move it if I need to but it'll be easier to kind of like give me leverage to pull. If that's together the whole way. So it really helps to be able to tug a little here, like this, having both sides zipped up together. Have so many main components of the bag together. Look how cute. Oh, made sure donut was right in the middle. Oh, I love it. Okay, I'm gonna find the centers on my zipper panel. lining top pieces, my lining bottom pieces, and we'll need the base in a second, but we're not worried about that yet. Um, I already found the center of that one, so I need to find the center of this one. And you're going to want to decide right now if you want this in the front or the back. I like this in the back of the bag. I'm gonna take that first and then this way we have our zippers going the same way. We're gonna line this up here, center it, clip it on. You could baste it on if you'd like. I'm just gonna go ahead and do everything at once. And then I'll need the lining top piece. And we're going to line that up to the edges. One side is fraying. Okay. 
And then we're going to stitch this together. Just a tiny back stitch at the start and the stop of that zipper panel. And then we will flip our seam allowance and stitch underneath. So this is all gonna come up like this and we're gonna stitch under there. Repeat that to the other side. Also, make sure that you are marking, like, not like the, the top doesn't have those. Be a little late on the other side if you didn't do it, but hopefully you're good. <laughs> okay, so right side down. No, that's wrong. Don't listen to me, but do. <laughs> Your zipper panel goes right side up, lined up with that. It just feels weird because it's half sewn. So clipping that on. Clipping on the lining top. I feel like I haven't recorded a tutorial in so long. I mean, it has been a little bit, but I'm gonna get back into it a lot. So I'm like second guessing myself. I haven't even sewn too much lately, but I will be doing lots of show prep soon. So I'll be sewing a ton. I'm thinking of making some of these for shows too. It's fun and um, you don't have to use a ton of the print. Like the first one I made, I only put the print on the center of the exterior so I, I barely used any. All right, we need to top stitch under here. sides together. We're going to clip that. Okay, now our seam allowance does go in for this. going to top stitch the base. You can if you'd like. And then we're going to go to the other side and do the same thing. We've got the base on, 
Make sure that your zipper is out of the way. So I'm gonna like clip this here. We're gonna line up the side seams and you can also line up that seam right there. Again, I cut mine a little funky right here. So I just need to be mindful of that. All right, so on these sides, you're going to start with your 3 8 inch to match your exterior. I'm gonna go to right there, and then you're going to work to a half inch. That is why I wasn't worried about that. I knew I'd be well within my seam allowance. If you're starting at the bottom, you need to start at the bigger seam allowance. And then you can come in to your normal seam allowance at the top. And then we need to box the corners, just like we did on the exterior. And then I just want that seam to be open. It doesn't have to be. seam allowance of the base in and then the side open. And we're going to stitch those. Now our lining is done. And go ahead and open that mostly. We need to turn the lining. Technically this is inside out for the lining, but you have the right side of the material out. And then we're going to put that inside of the exterior. So again, this goes on the back of my bag. So this is my front. I'm going to put that in there. And another way I can tell is this is the front of my bag. I want my zipper going this way. So there's where it closes. Perfect. You're going to want to make sure that your hardware is all folded down out of the way. You want your zipper to be inside and you're going to want your zipper panels to be down. I'm gonna pop a clip right here just for a second. Same thing on this side, just to keep them out of the way. It's not centered yet, but I'm going to go to my side seams and I'm going to fold those open, make sure they line up, and clip. I'm going to do that on both sides first. So again, you just want that zipper folded down out of the way. Fold these open. If you wanted, you could make center um, 
markings, but really this should line up so you can just go around and clip. Same thing on this side. Oh, that was pretty centered. <laughs> I just guess. Okay. Something else I do is I'll take the edges where I know they're lined up and I'll just kind of tug a little and it'll adjust if it needs to. Alright, we're going to stitch around this. And as you're going, you're going to want to make sure you just kind of feel that you're not catching a zipper, a zipper panel, or any hardware. So I can feel like this is smooth. I'm safe. Anytime you adjust, you want to make sure that that needle is down. Things might shift a little on you. Just make sure you line it back up. Like this zipper panel in here is trying to fight me. I will not let it win. making sure too that my seams stay flat and I'm just double checking it real quick all right so now we need to birth the bag through that pocket it is a pretty big pocket um, but depending on your materials and if you decided to use any interfacing it might affect it a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and birth the bag off camera, but I'm just pulling it through here. This takes me a minute. The bag has been birthed. Yay, we're almost done. So I just pressed out my corners, made sure everything was nice. Now I need to close this pocket. I'm going to put a woven label in here when I close it. So you're just going to like fold over these edges. I just kind of do them one at a time sometimes. But you're going to make sure everything is laying nice and flat. And I like to clip it all together before I add the label I'll start sewing. So you're just basically kind of like top stitching it closed. And I'll get about a fourth of the way add my label. I like to push it in as far as possible and then pull it to where it looks good. I've been really enjoying top stitching bags on my cylinder arm, but I need to get a new um, extension cord for it. I have to unplug the air conditioner and stuff, so I'm gonna top stitch this on my regular machine. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just pushing the lining in and pushing 
that zipper pocket in the lining for it and you can kind of feel you want to push the corners of that in and then you can zip it back up and push your the rest of your lining in I'm gonna go ahead and put my zipper pull on right now because if I don't there's a chance I'll forget and um, I I've sold a bag before without one. <laughs> I, they, they knew, but <laughs> there's nothing worse than like getting to a show and being like, oh, the lining in this bag was never closed. I've done that. Or <laughs> not having a zip friend. I, it happens. Multiple members of my family have used the screwdriver lately, and I was actually kind of worried it wasn't going to be in there. So, um, I just tape both sides of one side of the zipper tape and then fold it in. I don't glue this. Um, some people do, but I really think that this, uh, screw goes in so far that it's fine. And you're going through three layers of the zipper tape too. I do need new batteries. But you just want to get that as far as it can go. Perfect. Uh. Alright. Just need a top stitch and put our um, handles on. Oh, I gotta make my crossbody. That didn't stay lined up perfectly, but that's all right. All right, so you just want to like roll that with your fingers so that it's good. Maybe break a clip. Sometimes I like to turn my bags um, wrong side out to top stitch, but I'm not going to do that this time and I hope it looks great. me nervous. That's why I like top stitching on the cylinder arm. I don't have to turn anything. Okay. Alright, so if you want to turn it, some of the clips might come off. Just beware. turn it like all the way all the way but I wouldn't leave it like this long okay so I like to start in like a back corner and I'm also going to up my stitch length to a five also changed my needle before top stitching before that's always a good thing to do if you're questioning 
cannot hurt. And you want to make sure, again, that your zipper panel and any hardware are out of the way, as well as this zipper that's floating around. So, okay, and then when I get to where I can access this thread easily, I usually go ahead and snip that before I go any further. There's less chance of it like tangling and knotting at the very end when you get um, to stitch over it if you eliminate it before you get there. worth turning it when I finish and it looks really nice. <laughs> Alright, turn this back again. put the handles on and make the crossbody strap. I'm going to make the crossbody strap um, on my own because there's no real just a regular webbing crossbody strap. Okay, so you're going to want to take, let's see, your overlapping, it says about an inch. I'm going to make marks an inch up and I'm going to try to wrap the um, hardware around in that spot. So I'm just gonna lay that, oh wait, you want it to go this way, <laughs> I'm gonna lay the hardware right on that and fold up and clip. So you want to make sure it's not tangled, I'm gonna lay the hardware right on that, fold up, clip, same thing on this side. Lay it on the hardware, fold up, and clip. Make sure it's not tangled. Lay it on the hardware, fold up, and clip. You can stitch this if you'd like, or you can just rivet. Um, I think I just riveted before. However, this is wanting to come apart. All right, so I just need to rivet that together and make my crossbody strap and I am all done. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out the Sew Whatever Project box um, before it sells out and you can snag this pattern early. Uh, if not, it'll be out at a later date. Um, and then also, just a reminder, this print is when I run in my shop and it was part of my winter holiday run for 2024. Um, you catch on retail and if it's out of stock, you can always request it to be printed as a custom. Hope you have a great day. Bye.